So we begin with news from the referendum uh, that took place in various regions. Now, in all, the proposed new regions, at least 50% voter turnout is expected, uh, was expected. And so 80% yes endorsement is expected before green light for the creation of new regions. So let's run through some uh, figures we already have uh, in the studio concerning the result we're getting and uh, also what the numbers should be for northeast region a total of 252,575,000 registered voters were expected at least 50 percent which is uh, just around the figures of 126,000 and a little in excess registered voters are expected to turn out to vote and uh, at least 80 percent of them uh, if they have um, uh, that turnout will have a yes vote for the Bono East region uh, a total of um, 525,275,000 registered voters were expected to cast the ballot, but uh, at least 80% turnout of, uh, of, of, uh, of some 210,000 out of uh, 262,000 was needed. And ultimately, that would uh, qualify for a yes vote or a yes result at the end of the day. So that was for the Bono East region. Let's go to the next region. And uh, you get to find that some of the numbers have been intriguing because the results mostly have uh, uh, turned out to be um, as what the Kunetseers would say. For the Ahafu region, 300,108 voters were expected to cast their ballot in the proposed region, and at least 150,054 uh, were expected to turn up to vote, at least 80%, and that would regist uh, represent some 240,086. Um, they needed to vote yes for the creation of a new region. Well, no, uh, we'll bring you some of the detailed results subsequently. For the Western North, 501,306 voters were expected uh, to vote, at least uh, uh, if you have 50% uh, turnout, you also need 80% of that 50% and at least 250,653 representing a 50% was needed. And then out of that 250,000, um, at least 80% needed to turn out. And uh, OT region. OT region also had a registered population of some 366,000 and um, at least uh, 183,000 was needed as a 50% turnout and at least 80% of that was also needed. So, so we have all the subsequent details also for you. But within the day, the Vice President, Dr. Mahamudu Baumia, cast his vote in the special referendum on the proposed creation of the six um, new regions. The Vice President cast his vote at uh, his uh, polling station, the Perega Presbyterian Junior High School A polling station at Walla Wale in the proposed Northeast region. Speaking to the media after the vote, the Vice President said he was confident of a smooth peaceful vote which ultimately would affirm the wishes of the people on the proposal to create new regions. Here this morning uh, to participate in the referendum on the creation of the new regions. Um, I, I am voting in the northeast region, the proposed northeast region. Uh, the Nayiri made a petition um, and sent a petition to the president who then passed it on to the Council of State and then to the commission that was set up. Uh, this has resulted in a referendum uh, where we have the six districts of Cheruponi, Yunyo, Bunkurugu, West Mamprusi, East Mamprusi, and then Yagaba, Yagaba Kubori. Uh, all of these come to form the northeast region as proposed. And so I can see a lot of enthusiasm for the region. I myself, as uh, a, a, an indigent of this proposed region, am exercising my civil duty to come in and express my um, view on this um, 
proposed creation of this region. And this is why I have just voted um, in this. And I want to take this opportunity to encourage everybody to come out and vote. I think it's very important that everybody has a say uh, in the creation of this region and in all the other regions. Uh, the Savannah region uh, is also, I've been there, um, and, and you know, uh, they should also come out and vote. The OT region, the Hafu region, the Northwestern region, all of the regions. We have about six regions in all that we are proposing. Uh, and I think this is not a partisan matter. There's no NDC, MPP, PNC, CPP, no. This is a matter for those people in the affected regions. And so everybody should come out and vote and express their will. Hundreds of kilometers away, the people of Akpafu Odomi, they boycotted the referendum, stating they did not petition for the creation of the proposal T region. They said they wish to remain in the Hokwe district and it will still be within the boundaries of the existing Volta region. The chief of the community, Nana Kofi Edu II, Ella told his people not to vote at all, and uh, they seem to have heeded his, uh, to his advice. <laughs> The people of Akpafu are expected to vote in a referendum to decide whether they want to be part of the T region, but many have boycotted the exercise. So, I, 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 are you not voting? No, no, no. no, no. Why? You don't like it. Mm. You don't like no, it. Not, not that you don't like it, though. You know, we are not against the creation of the region. Well, well the only problem we are facing now is yeah. we don't want to be uh, a dropout yeah. from the whole municipality. Yeah. And the government is just forcing us. Uh, Our well, petition, they didn't take them. We need petition, they are forcing us to, to undergo the referendum. What's happening, my brother? I wish more words. Yeah. We are fighting for posterity, not today. So never on this yeah. will I vote. My, 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 my brothers too are. Uh, something that we, we don't ask. It's not that we, we can go there and do anything because I don't I don't need it. If you ask something, uh, yeah. uh, if you don't want it, if yeah. you don't want to buy something, don't ask the price of it. We didn't have the price. Yeah. Show me the uh, uh, theory okay, yeah, yeah, this vote. Yeah. I will not do it. The people claim they made their position clear during the consultation stage, but their views were ignored. Our Akpafu and the lobby did not petition to be part of uh, OT, the new, uh, the proposed OT. The proposed OT, they, they are thinking of governance coming to them. They, but when we are put before, uh, shifted to this side, it will even be far, far it will go further. So we still want to remain at where we are, which is uh, our municipality, and for that matter, uh, Volta region. Uh, there are people who are saying that it will bring development. Well, it will bring development to those people. I don't think that uh, by creating the, uh, by creating, by pushing it onto this side, that will bring the, uh, development here. Simply because uh, Volta region will still get their the share of uh, development. So if we remain in Volta or in OT, we'll still get our share. Yeah, that's why we are not voting. And it is a community decision. We took the decision together. According to the presiding officer at Atpafu, SCMB shared police station in Beneza at Pabli, as at 2.30 p.m., only nine persons had voted. In the voted register, we are 790 voters who are in the who are expected to to vote. But as of now, it's only nine voters who came in the vote. And Agents of no OT campaigners have also raised concerns of what they say is a subtle ploy by the EC to prevent them from observing the exercise by issuing them a wrong accreditation card. Some of his team members were challenging us that we should get out of the center because the accreditation we are using is not the right one. We said no, we can't do that, we won't do it because we didn't issue the accreditation to ourselves. So if anything, they should go to the EC and find out why they issued a wrong accreditation to us. Meanwhile, people, uh, especially three persons, are said to be on the manhunt list of the police. Uh, they have been accused of transporting shotguns in the Akpafu area. The Joint Operations Center for the OT Region Referendum said the three persons were in possession of a locally manufactured shotgun in the Akpafu Domi area 
uh, as they managed to abscond on a motorbike during a hot chase by a military patrol team. The commander for the JOC, DSP Meister Clay, added that one person fell off the motorbike during the chase together with a gun, but quickly managed to climb the motorbike, leaving the guns on the floor. He addressed the media at the Joint Command Center, set up at the Boemang Senior High School. Took off at exactly seven o'clock. We had security persons at almost every polling station, and places we thought could be volatile, we made it two to a polling station. Everything has gone on very well so far. Around 9:20, we received a, a report at the JOC here that three young men were spotted going from station to station, polling station to polling station, as observers and they were not accredited. We quickly sent a message to our patrol team, and they were picked up and brought to the Jassican District Police Headquarters. After interrogation, it came out that they were also youth of the town who thought they could add up to the security. And since they were not accredited, they were warned to desist from such act and were allowed to go. After an hour, Another three groups, uh, three men on a motorbike, three of them were riding one motorbike, were spotted by the military patrol at Akpaku Odomi, and they were signaled to stop. They tried speeding away in the process. One of them fell off the motorbike. Together with an item, he managed to get back on the motorbike and they sped off. When the soldiers took the item, it happened to be uh, locally manufactured shotgun. This gun has been handed over to our police and the case is being investigated. Thousands of people from across the Dagbon Kingdom joined the Bolinlana to make a historic journey around the Gbewa Palace to climax the funeral of the late Yana Muhammadu Abdullah IV. Many residents are hoping the memorable event graced by the Vice President Dr. Muhammadu Baumia would see to would see an end to the long-standing chieftaincy conflict that has held back development of the area. My colleague Justice Beidou addressed the event or witnessed the event in Yendi for Joy News. Here's his report. The climax of one of the biggest gatherings Yendi has ever seen. This is the Bolin Lana of the Dagon Kingdom, led by his chief warrior of the state and many other sub chiefs circumnabulating the Bewa Palace. It is the peak of a funeral that has been in limbo for well over 30 years. This is about the heaviest crowd that I have ever seen and reported from. Many, many people, children, men from not just here in Yendi, but all across the, the burn stage, have trooped in here into the Bewa Palace to catch a glimpse of what may well be a spectacle of a lifetime. Over 50 years, they haven't experienced this. This is a lifetime event that they are, I mean, many young people, you know, who are, even so many people, over 70 years, they have no experience. For a lifetime of many people in their town, they have never seen the funeral of the young Mamadou or any young man that was ever performed in their history. When this, this funeral was, was not performing, there was a lot of problem in the end. Any time, any death, there was curfew, there was everything in the end. We can't sleep. They were fighting each other here. But now that it has been done, I'm sure you will have total peace in the world. Many here did not imagine a day like this would ever come. There is excitement in the air. The crowd is thick and the unending drumming and dancing is blowing a thick dust that is going high in the air. It's been over three decades since the late Yana death. In that period, the city has been thrown into a state of unease and chaos. 
chaos. Many times forcing some of its finest indigents to even flee for their lives. The worst victims were its women and children. People would always want to come and visit their families who are in Yendi. But as it was at that time, it was something that they have to sit and think about it. What will happen if they come? How, what will they tell their people whom they will leave at different places to come and see them? What will they go back? What will be the feedback when they come and see their people in that uh, sorrow? It was a very sad thing as at then. People were doubting as to whether it will be able to happen. But God being so good and things being so well, people are happy. And even those who are not around and they can see on the media, to be frank, they are very happy about what is going on currently. So that is one of the... As this funeral draws to a close, the other faction, the Andani Gate, would also be preparing for that of the Yana Abdullahi Andani in a week's time. It is widely believed that would be the biggest hurdle. And if this city and its people are able to make that leap, then Yendi, the once vibrant capital of the Dabon Kingdom, could be on its way back to its former glory. Justice Beidou, Joy News, Yendi. And in the same vein, the Andani Gate in the Dagbon Chieftaincy area says it will respect the terms of the Asantehine led committee of eminent chiefs on the organization of funeral rites for the late Yana. The Abudu side is expected to, the, to end the funeral rites of um, Yana Mahamudu Abdullah today. And per the agreement reached, the Andani family will start the rites from January 4 and end on the 17th at the Jubilee House Thursday. The head of the Andani family, Yona Abubakar announced the family's commitment to respect the roadmap, but also demanded that government brings closure on the murder of the late Yana Yakubu and Dani, who died 15 years ago in a conflict. If we arrive at this point, following the roadmap, and it has not been without challenges, and we've also done a lot of compromises to be able to arrive at this stage. So I want to thank the government for all that has gone through. Okay. And, we'll and therefore, I want to appeal to government and even successive governments not to rest on their oars in un unraveling the mystery surrounding the murder of our late father, Naya Kubu Andani, so that uh, it will be an issue that will actually uh, make Dagbang a more peaceful place and everybody to rest and be sure that nobody can take the law into his or her own hands, uh, knowing very well that whoever, done, uh, whoever does that will be uh, looked for. Well, before we go, President Ekufuado also expressed his commitment to bring closure to the gruesome murder of the late chief and applauded the Andani clan of adhering to the terms of the peace pact. The events that led to the, the death of the Yana Yakubu Andani, those events can never go away. Whatever needs to be done to unearth the truth has to continue to be done. I'm a firm subscriber to that point of view. Because I think as lawyer Brian Mahama, a very respected senior lawyer in this country, will tell you, criminal conduct can never go away. There's always accountability for it. So I think that as far as that is concerned, the message that you have sent, that that matter is still at large, will remain at large. We will continue. The law enforcement agencies of the country 
will always need the cooperation of the people of Yembe and of Dagbon to be able to unravel the truth. If something untoward did indeed happen. So you can have that assurance that the mere fact that these processes are finding closure in the course of the next two weeks does not therefore mean that all, everything else has been dropped. It cannot be. As long as there's been no closure on that, it cannot be. So I want to give you that assurance. And that's it for the news highlights we have in the studio. But we'll look at what stories there are to review the various news portals. We'll go to myjohnline.com. But we'll also bring you the latest sports update. You would know by now that uh, we had the Boxing Day matches, but we also have uh, matches today and then also the weekend. Look, in England, they just don't go on holidays, do they? We're taking a break. When we come back, more details for you. <laughs>